There's a conspiracy behind the, the disappearance of MH370. There's a quote somewhere. Yes. Just your opinion. Yes. I read somewhere I happened to find 370. <coughs> well, these, these things are normally done with an intention to destabilize the nation. Destabilization. And considering what has happened since 2013 up until now, including the currency values fluctuating very badly and Malaysia's sovereignty at stake, there are a lot of things that need to be done in Malaysia in terms of ensuring that the new laws coming about in Malaysia are in conformity with the international laws. Because once Malaysia can do that, once Malaysia can adhere to the World Trade Organization completely, or even absorb the World Trade Organization, you know, to become part of the Malaysian culture, then you see, there won't be so many attacks on Malaysia's sovereignty. Of course, pre-planned, pre-planned conspiracy. No, to destabilize the country, to destabilize the leaders, to bring a bad name to Malaysia, which Malaysia has to be very careful about, because I still think that Malaysia is amongst one of the best countries in the world. And the Malaysian people are among the best people in the world. Yeah. We believe that too. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about MH17? Do you think there's a conspiracy somewhere? That also. That also. 17, is it a code? Sorry? Do you think 17 is a code? C-O-D-E? 370 It's hard to explain. Then maybe some other time we, we can delve into it All right. because this becomes part of the the litigation oh. under the International Criminal Court. So unless many things are clarified and the entire fact files given or released by the International Criminal Court, I would not want to say too much. These assets have never been released before. The only time that they were, they came into the purview of this earth was in 1959, 1960. But even from that time onwards, there were too many violent clashes internally between the various groups who were for conducting redemption and the other groups against conducting redemption. Because the heritage accounts, historical accounts that are normally there in all the global banks are meant to be utilized together with these boxes, you know, whether it's TOV boxes, FRBs, FRNs, so Kobe Sona boxes, the farmers bond boxes, super the super petroli boxes, the liberty bond boxes, the, the black coffin boxes, or the blue bible, yeah, trumpet. you know, the trumpet boxes. And there are many, many units. This, this challenge was taken up by TUE Capital at a time many years ago when very few people understood what to do with these boxes, how to do, how to do the settlement. So taking TUE Capital as an example, ever since TUE Capital introduced it to me personally, and I have gone and seen the boxes, of course, in the office and 
at uh, Datu Zahri's uh, residence premises, which have been converted into the U.S. Capitol. Well, it's a very special SKR location. We can do that. Now, where does U.S. Capital fit in into the picture? U.S. Capital is a triple-A bank and uh, in good standing in operation since 1979. And pre prior to that, also U.S. Capital has existed, but as different corporate entities. Currently, U.S. Capital is acknowledged as the world's largest trust, custodial trust bank. And already it is a major shareholder in 17 prime banks. 17 prime banks, including HSBC being number one, and there are many other banks. U.S. capital is very, very strongly backed up by cash and gold. <coughs> one of the reasons that we involve the U.S. capital together with the international court <coughs> system. International court is the IPCC, International Criminal Court, ICC, and the International Court of Justice, ICJ, and other Supreme Courts or High Court tribunals are interlinked with the function carried out by the U.S. Capital Private Bank. It is very important to understand one thing about redemption. If any party tries to take these units to any bank, the bankers don't know what to do. The bankers will, at, at best, suggest a security company, and you can go and deposit into the security company of the bank. But the bankers are not prepared to take any, any position on these historical heritage assets or claim that they can redeem because they have not been granted the redemption license. U.S. Capital Private Bank has been granted the redemption license and a bank license, which is interlinked with my uh, special Federal Reserve Board, special judicial judge and sovereign royal imperial attorney general for the courthouses. That license is very, very important because it is referred to as the redemption court license. And since this has been granted to U.S. Capital based on very solid fundamentals, the fundamentals is that the U.S. Capital Private Bank is today one of the largest banks which is also co-owning two very major gold bunkers. The bunkers are called the Global Bunker. And those bunkers have really very phenomenal gold assets, platinum assets, silver assets, diamonds, rubies, and many other treasures. You know, that, that is not part of the world awareness. It is known to the central banks. It is known to the Treasury bureaus. It is known to the U.S. Treasury also. And U.S. capital, when we receive the assets under the U.S. capital, it is with a view that we will use these boxes, we will contemplate, we will conjecture what is the estimated value of each and every box or offering. We will do a fully integrated credit and cash revaluation on the antiquity or the historical genuineness of these boxes, together with determining the exact ownership, the exact mandate to use these boxes. We also supplant these units, these boxes, redemption articles, with a proper gold backup confirmation letter. The gold backup confirmation letter is granted by the U.S. Capital Private Bank to any parties that may be holding the boxes or to the banks or to the other banks which are involved in the transactional modalities. 
Now, when we are able to mix and match three fundamental things, the box and the serial number on every box, that serial number is linked with special heritage and historical accounts posted in many international banks worldwide and registered in the Federal Reserve System, registered in the U.S. Treasury System, number one. Thereafter, it's registered in various central banks. Number two is the ability to discern the accounts, to check on certain mainframes, the original accounts that were created in the 1910, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and onwards, those accounts and spreadsheets are still available to us. So, in trying to determine any box unit, anything, we look at whether the boxes are linked with any gold bunker, any gold warehouse. And if it turns out that the gold bunkers that we have within U.S. capital under our care, under our custodial guardianship, or as a Templar unit, where we are able to take these old art items and again reuse them. These boxes have never been used previously, especially the units starting from 1934 onwards. They have never been used. I've had debates and discussions with certain people who claimed these boxes have been used for creation of accounts and currencies, but they could not give any proof or evidence that where exactly these boxes were used. Because these boxes were transported on this earth in 1959, 1960, 1961 during those years only. And they became available in certain treasury bunkers, in certain banks. We have the complete audit available to us. The shipping manifest, the invoicing for the boxes, when they were purchased, by whom, all the paperwork exists to our courthouse exists in our court, exists to the benefit of our courthouse, which holds the complete receivership of all these boxes. So no matter who you are, where you're from, one way or the other, you'll have to come back to the court to obtain the court clearance letter. And then the court grants the U.S. Capital Private Bank a, a special permit with introduction of any boxes, and the U.S. Capital Private Bank is able to issue an SKR for any of these units together with the gold backup confirmation. So the accounts, the box units, and the gold, these three things have to be matched in order to assess the complete value. If the gold is missing, you know, and if the accounts are missing and you are only holding the box, you may not be able to conduct the clearance of any of the articles. This is where we in the court come in. For example, Datuzari is handling a number of units. Let's say in the office we have seven units, and at his special custodial place, he has 20 boxes more. Even if you take them to the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury, you, they will not redeem it. They don't have the cash to redeem it. But we have the cash. We have the cash and we have the gold to match. The moment we can match, automatically the entire redemption starts. The purview under which this is done is essentially what we call the icjglobal.org. The icjglobal.org is the main United States Treasury Board and the Federal Reserve System. Some say that the Mellencamp unit 
or the Burbank's units are also counterparties to it. But we have to see all that based on the documents that are available to us. The purpose of using these boxes and creating new accounts which are fully certified by gold essentially is done to create more liquidity in the market. And liquidity is what is missing. There is no new cash in the, in the system. And when we talk about conducting uh, implementation of very major projects throughout the world, very major infrastructure projects, it is, it is top priority for us to start redeeming now, bringing all the things together, and we are able to provide all the necessary paperwork in order for you to have the clearance. So once we draw up the bank statements, once we draw up the SKRs, once we draw up any bank confirmation letters, that we can coordinate with other banks who will monetize or work together, then under that purview the redemption can occur. And after all the paperwork is done, thereafter the real work that we do is set up these special accounts and then work with the comptroller of currency, normally associated with certain central banks and their printing units. Because the central banks are the note issuing authorities, right, together with their counterpart units, what they need is these articles which are audited, they need the accounts information, and they need the gold backup certification. Then you see, any central bank, any government, any nation can print currency legally and lawfully. Without all of these paperwork being there, if the paperwork is not there, and you only have the box units, you only have some accounts related with gold, you cannot use so what we are offering is the entire package structure for redemption and the U.S. Capital Private Bank currently is handling all the necessary redemption procedures and I'm directly supervising that. It doesn't mean that other banks cannot be redemption banks. If you're talking on the subject of Malaysia, we take the top seven biggest banks in Malaysia and if we go into a partnership or discussion with them, whether they will choose to become Redemption Bank partner with the US Capital Private Bank and with the ICJ Global System, then yes, we can then grant the license to any local bank here in Malaysia. And it is but natural, whatever numbers we bring from the redemption and settlement of these units, those numbers are so huge in billions and trillions and quintillions, quadri quadrillions and quintillions, that those numbers have to be attached with a central bank. Only a central bank is able to use such large volume numbers. The primary banks, the primary banks or the prime banks, the commercial banks don't have the license to cover this big number. They normally have the license going up to any numbers of hundreds of billions or maybe maybe just one or two trillion or up to five trillion maximum. You don't hear of <coughs> the commercial banks or the prime banks engaging in these unless they have been given the right to redeem the license to redeem and the necessary appointment or approval letters to redeem. So the US capital makes it a point that when talking with other banks or the Ministry of Finance, central banks, we support the entire paper trail. And when we have the paper trail, then this can be settled. In one week, it's fully settled and the money becomes available. But it does require a lot of coordination with America, with China, with India, the courthouses, the courts related with all these countries.
Only from the court, then you can apply for redemption in the banks. Currently, we have everything available to us in US capital and in the international court system. So for example, if we handle a fund of one trillion, which is a numbers, a stated numbered account, but it's not just the numbers. Those are gold backup numbers. And when we have the gold backup together with any credited or accredited estimated valuations of the boxes, it is then everything comes into compliance. And what we have today with TV Capital is a very advanced stage, very advanced stage where we are moving forward with the banking paperwork to give the clearance to the ministry or to the central bank, ministry of finance, or ministry of justice or the, the central bank units and the other primary banks that work with the central bank to determine how much money we need to support the new economy of Malaysia, to support the new sovereignty of Malaysia. Because Malaysia is one country. Now there are over 200 countries all over the world. So in determining that already there is a 33 nations committee, a 33 nations in project implementation to build housing, and housing is very critical in the developing nations or the underdeveloped nations. There are not enough houses. There is not enough agriculture. There is not enough food and water. There is not enough shelter. There is not enough clothes for people to wear. Except in advanced uh, or developed nations, you have everything. But in the developing nations or underdeveloped nations, these things are luxury. And then the cash comes in because we have been compliant to all and everyone's requirements. And now we expect that others will comply with our directives or requirements, what we say and how to do what to do. Nothing can be done instantly. You, we must wait for the proper time to bring together the parties who are going to be part of the whole project, the whole venture. And at the moment, we have those parties. Yeah. Once we redeem even amounts of one trillion, or two trillion, or four trillion, we redeem and that money can flow into the new economies. It can come into the World Bank unit. It can come into the United Nations unit. It can come into the African Development Bank board. It can come into the Asian Development Bank board. It can come into the whole World Bank board. You know, these kind of big numbers. And from there, you take, take, you know, the pie is very big and you give to everyone. It's like eating a cake, but small, small pieces. You're able to give and make people happy and satisfied. We will definitely work with the Malaysian government and also talk with the Malaysian government and the ministries to, first of all, from our side, give them a redemption license. So that after you get the redemption license and the approval and the appointment letters, you can conduct as much redemp redemption you want to do without, without feeling that there is somebody always trying to stop you. Just really not many people who are trying to stop you. Only at some times there are some very special groups. They also want to help, but they want to make sure that the procedures and the guidelines are followed. followed. In Malaysia, <coughs> I am very comfortable <coughs> because Malaysia can understand our language. Malaysian people can understand our language, what needs to be done. Although we have set up for the last one and a half years or two, almost two years, 
we have set up a mechanism with China government to settle the entire 303 Kung Shan Shi era bunker. That bunker is very, very large. But the, the bunkers from Philippines, for example, that we have brought under U.S. capital uh, with the full gold backup, without any litigation involved, because we are the court, and the court itself is jointly owning the bunkers, and the court is able to underwrite, you should have no problem, right? Any time Datu Zari requires any court letters or the bank letters from U.S. capital, it is available. So you can imagine the long wait. From 1933, now we are in 2017, we have actually gone ahead and conducted redemption. We've already conducted the procedural guidelines. This is a huge, this is like 70, 80 years, that if we are able to realize in monetary terms, in liquidity, in create, to remove the market crashes, but to infuse new liquidity, and should we all succeed in this mission, then I will say this is too good to be true. It is truly good, and it is truly true. I started to discover it in the Philippines in 2000. When the Americans came to Manila and talked about the first redemption, right, which never happened at that time. Right? So um, then for several years we did not bother about this, right? And then the Chinese came back. And they created a redemption program about five, six years back, right? And uh, it happened so that one of my friends is a very close member to the Chinese family, right? Okay. They have been fighting together. They were both in martial arts. He's okay. German as well, right? He lived there. He trained there. He okay. taught as a teacher there. Okay. And then when they started with this program, well, we talked about it. And he asked me, okay, can you give me a helping hand in the Philippines, which I did, right? So I brought many, well, not many, but I brought a number of Filipinos okay. to the redemption, right? Unfortunately, due to political problems, the redemption in the Philippines right. may happen or may not happen, right? But out of this came then um, the contact to people like the Dato, your father, right? or other clients in, in, in uh, well, basically all over the world, right? And then I was asked to work with these clients, potential clients, right? And to get their um, information, um, get the pictures done like we did here today, right? In order to prepare the um, submission of a KYC, proper KYC, proper to the redemption, right? And my friend then is checking for us, all the numbers and um, all the information that are needed to say, okay, we can take this client because his bonds and boxes are apparently yeah, yeah. genuine, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, then only when the physical verification find takes place, then we know it's for real or not, uh. right? So far, we assume because the numbers are in master lists, we can verify immediately the, all the numbers you give us, okay. right? We can tell you within one day, okay, these numbers are good, or we can tell you the client is also good, or the client is not good because he has presented his file already to many, many um, intermediaries, right? So basically, our job is to do the, the um, well, what we did today, right? And then take the file to the redemption, right? The redemption is a program. Yeah. It's not a physical person, right? The redemption is a program. The re redemption was created by um, the former royal family of China, oh, right? Okay, okay. They have the money to pay all this. And, but involved is the World Bank, involved is the um, International Monetary Fund, involved is the G20, right? The Fed in the US, right? Because it's paid in dollars, mm -hmm. basically. 
So basically that is the job we are doing, right? Yeah. To bring also the real clients who have the real stuff to the real party, right? Not to 10,000 other brokers or things like that, right? So that's basically my job. What is your view on the historical bonds that you saw, saw today? Well, I didn't see any bonds, properly speaking. We only saw boxes, boxes right? Okay. We saw a few bonds from the gentleman over there, yeah. right? And um, the boxes so far look good, right? But I cannot say if the boxes are genuine or not. Ah, okay. What we will verify now are the numbers of the boxes, like the Golden Bible boxes and all the other boxes, right? We will tell you, okay, gentlemen, the numbers are good, everything is clean, bring it in, right? And since I will give your father the KYC that the redemption has prepared for him yeah. already, right? All what you need to do now is to add on an additional uh, list all the assets, right? So that this will be one package because in this redemption program is a rule. It is yeah. called the one-time rule. One -time. You can only present a file one time. If you have more assets, and you think that you can present only part of your assets now and then later you come back and say, oh, I still have more assets that will not work. They will not accept that. Okay. Why? A very simple reason for it. <coughs> they don't want you to make money by returning or turning yourself to another owner or holder, because there is no owner, holder, and then say, okay, Give, I buy this from you, I have money now, I buy this from you, and then you go back to the redemption. This is a no-no. So you have to present all your assets that you have, and if everything is okay, you get your money for all your assets. Right? Okay. Can you tell us again why you are not interested in the American bonds? It's not that I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be very precise. It is that the Americans, for the time being, are not interested in really redeeming these um, boxes that I have seen here. If you have had a Treaty of Versailles box, I would have said, okay, we take the picture, we take the information, okay. we take the KYC. But the other boxes, they have not given us any green light. Uh, they have not told us, okay, go and tell your clients that we will take them or that we will redeem them. That's not the case, right? So yeah. far, only for the Treaty of Versailles. Because the redemption program was created by the uh, Chinese about four or five years back, as I said, right? Okay. Basically, what they did a hundred years ago, okay. they issued these bonds and papers, and it was backed by gold. Uh, okay? So now, the gold is not free, because the papers are still outside, yeah. right? So they are going to collect about 40% of what has been issued about 80, 100 years ago. They will redeem these 40%. And then the rest will just be cancelled. But by redeeming 40% of what is outside, their gold will be freed. So they can use their gold assets again for new um, uh, guarantees. There is only one, one redeemer, that is the Chinese family. Okay. There's not even the Chinese treasury, they have nothing to do with it. No bank has anything to do with it. It is only the Chinese family. Oh, yes, Chinese. And they pay this with their own money, right? Okay. And the volume, as I said, it's 40% what is on the market. Oh, in the market. Right? In the Philippines, in South America, here in, in, in other Asian countries, right? And they will redeem for up to 40%, maybe 42, maybe 45, maybe only 35, who knows, yeah. right? But um, that is the volume they are considering, or the holder will get. Well, that's also depending on what it is. Like a yeah. Super Petrelli bond Super actually Petrelli. is, let's say, about 1 B per bond. It's about 750 to 800 million out of that, right? That means commissions and all the expenses for bankers, lawyers, and all these guys is already deducted, yeah. right? Now, so you have, let's say, 80%, right? From these 80%, they will probably give you, for yourself, between 10 and 20%. Ah, okay. That money you can use for your own, you can give it to your children, you can do what you want. 
the, rema- the balance is for projects, uh, humanitarian projects, right? For the projects. And you have your own projects, like your father does, yeah, yeah. fine. If you don't have your own projects, they will give their projects, right? But each and every project has to be approved by the IMF. IMF. Yes, they will give you a number. When they have checked your project, they will give you a number, right? Okay. And then they will release the money for the project. For the project, right? yes. The gold is basically in the United States. It's clean in the United States. Mm. Only the, the United States only? Or the land? That is what I know. Oh, yeah. I don't know, maybe there is some gold. No, I think it's basically in the United oh. States, yes. Mm. But maybe the Chinese also are trying to get their gold back. They want to check if the Americans have still the, their gold, right? Because some countries know that their gold has disappeared uh, in America. That is a very good question because some individuals inherited from their grandfathers or whatever. Others bought them as collection items, right? Maybe not even knowing that they will be valuable. Uh, So there is a market for collection, right? You can buy these bonds there, but you can only buy a few. And some people who kept them speculated that maybe one day somebody will pay them. So, but basically, all, there are all possibilities. People who inherited it, people who stole it, right? And, and everything is possible. You cannot really say because, you know, this goes 80, 100 years back. So, if you can trace it, it would be perfect, right? With some families you can, because they really have it for many, many years. But others just bought it four, five years, three years back. But at least you should have it for minimum three years. Minimum three years, better even five years, otherwise the redemption may say no. Mm, If you come, for instance, you bought it yesterday and you will tell them, oh, I bought that yesterday, they will not take it. These can only be done by experts, right? Chinese experts, Chinese yes, basically, or people who have been trained by the Chinese, right? But they are real experts who can determine whether it is a fake one or whether it is a genuine one. So far, what we can say, once we have checked the numbers, we can say the numbers are good. So the bond is supposed to be good. But when you present the physical bond, then they can feel by touching Touching. already, right? This is fake. If it's a good fake one, because that also does exist, right? There are bad fakes and good fakes, right? The good one, the good fakes, that's harder. Only experts can then tell, right? So don't ever trust anybody who comes with bonds and says, oh, I have these bonds. Yes, okay, I will have a look at it. I will take the numbers. We check the numbers. But if you really want to sell it or give it back uh, because you don't own it, the experts will come, right? When you say, okay, we will redeem these, so there will be a meeting in the warehouse, security house, right? The experts will come and they will check bond by bond, individually. Each bond will be checked, right? And the bond, if, he's, if the bond is good, they will pay. If the bond is not good, forget about it. You may go to jail. Two middle-aged Japanese men reportedly caught trying to cross from Italy into Switzerland with $134 billion in bonds. $134 billion. This is a very tricky situation because if there is a party that wants to redeem, really wants to redeem, they will take the documents and check them and verify them. Um, that's what the Chinese will do. But the Americans, 
that's a little bit more complicated because very often they don't want to pay. Nobody has this much money. That is 1% of our GDP. There's no reason to pay, right? And they just collect these bonds and then they will tell the people that your bonds are fake. Your boxes are fake. And what are you going to do? We had customers, uh, Spanish customers with um, FRN box, right? They had it checked, right, really by experts and everything. Even forensic tests were made with the paper, right? And it was clearly said that these papers are genuine. And the Federal Reserve said, no, they're fake. So what are you going to do? Why is no one covering this story? There is a fake bond scam, we think. You can't do anything against the Federal Reserve, right? So that's why um, my personal opinion, it's better to deal with our Chinese friends than um, really to deal with uh, our American friends, right? They, they may pay and they may not pay. There is one royal family left, not the dragon family, right? There is one Chinese royal family left. They are living in two parts, right? And they are the ones who are doing this, right? They are using their own money and um, they own the Federal Reserve up to 60% and then they control basically the financial markets, right? With the money that they have. So they are capable of, of uh, coming up with this money and paying, right? Because we're talking about trillions of dollars, right? So you've got to have the money to do this, right? <laughs> and they do, yes, they do, right? But it's, uh, let's put it this way. Um, for me, it is going to be a great satisfaction if we achieve these goals. So that is, for me, the, the greatest uh, achievement that we can have. telah banyak yang mencari kesempatan untuk mendapat memanfaatkan keberadaan harta peninggalan ini. Sekumpulan orang-orang yang telah menyatakan dirinya pengurus untuk mendapatkan kewenangan memperdayakan harta ini. Sekarang saya mengapa menjelaskan semua ini kepada yang saya sambangi pagi hari ini. Adalah untuk membuka tentang kebenaran dari keberadaan harta tersebut dan memastikan bahwa harta Kerajaan tersebut telah saatnya untuk dimanfaatkan dengan ketentuan untuk kedamaian umat. Perjalanan harta kerajaan ini telah sangat panjang dari satu tangan negara lain sampai terakhir ditempatkan di dalam satu pengawasan penjaminan yang dibentuk oleh badan dunia. Tiap negara yang harta kerajaan kerajaannya ada di dalam badan pengawasan ini. Sama keputusannya harus dimanfaatkan untuk kepentingan manusia. Siapapun yang menyalahgunakan untuk kepentingan yang lain, seluruh raja-raja tetap tidak mengizinkannya. Serahkanlah dan manfaatkanlah hasilnya untuk mensejahterakan rakyat. Saya bicara untuk mengenai harta-harta atau benda-benda masa lalu di mana benda-benda masa lalu itu adalah keberadaannya adalah sebelum kita lahir benda-benda itu pun juga sudah ada. Adapun yang sudah saya diberitahu benda-benda tersebut itu adalah benda-benda nenek moyang kita atau leluhur kita yang sudah mendulur kita. Tapi benda-benda itu sendiri pun juga sudah diizinkan ke kita untuk mengupayakannya di mana benda-benda itu tersebut mengupayakan maksudnya supaya kita bisa lebih sejahtera lagi dari hari ini dengan hari ke depan karena izin inilah yang ditunggu oleh para-para pelaku para-para pemikir para-para 
pejabat dunia di mana benda ini kalau boleh berlaku selesai nah dunia akan berubah tapi tidak segampang itu mereka berpikir karena Tuhan pernah mengatakan kita hidup di dunia harus sempurna di mana kesempurnaan itu dalam arti kata apa kembalinya kita ke manusia, siapnya satu manusia seorang manusia kembali kepada Allah harus siap jadi mempersiapkan manusia siap untuk kembali kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala itu harus betul-betul siap. Nah, kalau itu sudah siap, Allah Subhanahu wa taala akan membukakan akan mengizinkan kita memakai mengupayakan benda-benda tersebut supaya betul-betul sesuai dengan yang diinginkan umat-umat yang ada di bumi ini. Satu saya ingatkan kepada semua-semua yang kita ada ini hanya Tuhanlah yang bisa membenarkan Tuhanlah yang bisa mengizinkan bulan Juni yang lalu sudah disampaikan kepada saya leluhur-leluhur raja-raja Nusantara seluruh dunia sudah mengizinkan sudah mengizinkan dan sudah membukakan harta-harta ini untuk diupayakan kepada seluruh umat-umat yang ada di bumi ini sebetulnya sejarah benda ini adalah sejarah kerajaan-kerajaan yang adalah kerajaan yang seluruh dunia dalam arti kata ada yang sebelah Indonesia, dunia sebelah timur, sebelah selatan, sebelah barat. Itu kerajaan Nusantara. Bukan Indonesia, bukan wilayah uh, uh, dunia sebelah timur, bukan yang ada di Melayu. Jadi Nusantara itu adalah dan itu semua mereka berkumpul untuk mengupayakan benda-benda ini supaya siapa nak mau pakai silakan pakai supaya Sejahteralah dalam satu daerah itu, sejahteralah satu negara itu, itu maksudnya kalau untuk uh, benda-benda tadi itu dan samping itu benda-benda uh, ini juga sudah, disim, sudah dikumpulkan dari mereka dari negara uh, dari kumpulan negara apa? Oke okay, sorry, benda ini sudah ada di zaman serikian ratus tahun yang lalu katakanlah di masa lalu yang sangat sangat silam dan satu lagi benda ini sudah dikumpulkan dalam satu bentuk nah di mana bentuk itu uh, dipakai oleh negara-negara adik kuasa mungkin dari Jerman mungkin dari Belanda mungkin dari Spanyol mungkin dari Amerika nah, tapi alhamdulillah sekarang benda itu sudah ditempatkan oleh di tempat satu badan dunia yang di mana tempat itu aman nah sekarang Bagaimana benda itu akan menjadi uh, apa ya? Akan menjadi suatu perubahan di uh, ekonomi di dunia ini uh, supaya masyarakat ini akan lebih uh, jaya, lebih makmur, lebih sejahtera ya dalam arti kata niat kita pribadi atau mungkin saudara-saudara yang lain tidak adalah perselisihan antar etnis. Raja yang ditentukan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Ingat, kalau raja sudah ditetapkan lalu ditentukan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala, dia tidak akan menjajah rakyatnya dan dia tidak akan membinasakan rakyatnya. Karena apa? Titah raja, ya ya tidak tidak. Bukan raja merajakan, bukan raja karena ada sesuatu benda dia jadi raja. Nih, ingat. Ini persoalan ini Anda harus sampaikan. Raja tidak merajakan dirinya jadi raja. Yang raja asli itu adalah raja yang ditentukan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala maka rakyatnya akan makmur dan sentosa. Ada tiga raja di dunia ini. Satu raja Madiraja adalah di sebelah selatan. Raja Depang ada di utara, raja Alif ada di barat. Nah, ketiga raja inilah yang punya benda 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 itu semua. Semua yang ada ini kita berkumpul semua itu adalah utusan-utusan Tuhan atau yang manusia-manusia yang disisikan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala inilah manusia-manusia yang bisa me, e, mengupayakan benda-benda ini di mana akan men, sampai kepada sasaran-sasaran-sasaran. Ingat, benda ini bukan dipakai untuk berpolitik, benda ini bukan dipakai untuk bermacam-macam cara untuk supaya menjadi kaya satu orang manusia. Tuhan tidak mengizinkan kita kaya, tapi Tuhan untuk menginginkan kita sejahtera, aman dan makmur. Mudah-mudahan tidak ada lagi uh, perselisihan antar suku, antar agama. Karena ingat, benda-benda ini bukan satu suku bangsa, satu agama, satu satu etnis yang punya adalah semua umat. Apa yang akan kita jalankan ini, ini amanah ingat. Amanah 
bukan pekerjaan yang seperti yang diterima oleh atasan kepada anak buah. Ini amanah. Kalau kita salah, kita salib. Kita silap, Allah Subhanahu wa taala ambil keputusan buat kita sendiri-sendiri. Jadi ingatkan saya ini adalah ini mungkin yang bicara, yang menyampaikan, yang pernah menyampaikan ke saya itu adalah leluhur-leluhur kita yang sudah silam masa silam tapi itu tidak terkira umurnya berapa ratus tahun yang lalu. Hanya itu yang bisa saya sampaikan, insya Allah mudah-mudahan kita akan menjadi lebih sejahtera dari hari ini dan semua umat di dunia ini sudah bisa menikmati hidup seperti apa layaknya manusia hidup di bumi ini. Oh well, uh, yeah, I can certainly explain about that. Um, in 2014, uh, when we held one of the first um, meetings <coughs> to indicate what is happening worldwide and uh, what is what is the anticipated future, and what, especially what are the challenges, and in view of the challenges. Um, it was recommended that uh, Malaysia should be having some kind of indemnity, financial in indemnity, to have some kind of backup capital that in the event things are delayed in the release of the global accounts funds, then the programs of Malaysia should not be put on hold. You know, there should be a way forward, you know, in overcoming what has happened previously in the past 20, 20, 25 years. So, in view of that, I had indeed recommended a substantial fund be put for use within Malaysia. And how, how that fund could be utilized would be through the formation of special boards or committees uh, and bring special experts from different industries, different fields and give them a chair, give them a position at managing the fund that we were talking about in those days. But somehow after consultations with certain authorities from Malaysian government also and some very key, key high-level people. They explained to us that although they welcomed the idea, there are some other critical issues that needed to be addressed also. Why Malaysia? Why my interest in Malaysia? Because over the last 150 years, Although not known as Malaysia 150 years ago, but the same region, same area, same kind of people contributed a lot of their time and resources to, to set up Malaysia as a regulatory unit, regulatory body. Today people know very little about what was done say 100 years ago or 150 years ago. <coughs> But it is our role to give clarity, to give an understanding of what was done at that time and what should be done at this time to keep everything in the past, you know, secure, 
and yet the present and the future. We can look at managing our activities, redemption, clearances of, of the accounts, well, in a more ethical manner. And why I say ethical manner? Because we've seen many wars. And during those wars, there's been a lot of destruction, especially in the Templar areas. When I say Templar, it's basically the guarded treasury units, you know, which are meant for planetary development, planetary earth development. And Malaysia, although being a tiny country, compared to all the other countries, was nominated uh, to be like a fort, a special um, gateway, even for the East India Company. I'm talking about uh, East India Company with 700 years of history. So this area, the whole uh, surrounding area of Malaysia, became something like a depository of paperwork, important legal text, legal litigature, and also fund management expertise that was brought into the region a long time back. Since we have studied in the international courts service, we have studied case histories, you know, pertaining to wealth management, money, or how societies have changed, or what have been the contributions of the people and Malaysia. In my opinion, today is a very important occasion for me to address uh, of this matter. It is not enough that we just give a small outlay of capital. Should there be delays in the system, everyone must grow. And because the Malaysian Central Bank and Malaysian uh, government, although they have not admitted how much of the interlinkage they've had with the British monarchy, the Central Bank of England, the Bank of England, and uh, the, the original uh, banks that played a very important role, such as HSBC, Standard Chartered. Standard Chartered Bank played a very important role in amalgamating many accounts. And this was done through the Central Bank unit of Standard Chartered, <coughs> also working with the Central Bank of Malaysia, Bank Negara Malaysia. And given that most of the accounts are tied in with the Templar units, Templar means the, the bonded warehouses, the bonded bunkers, the special facilities where gold, platinum, silver commodities are stored. The backup coming out from these, these bunkers or through special families and still descendants of that original 128 royal families are still doing the work. For example, I am one of the descendants. Datu Zari is also one of the descendants. For all I know, you may be one of the descendants of previous families who was also entrusted with certain work. So we are all together trying to understand a switch or understand the scenario. What is it that we need to do? Now, a very long time ago, special treaties were done and special assets were created to anticipate future requirements. And we are in that future. So, a certain group of elders or missionaries, say 100 years ago, already looked in the future, 100 years later, and prophesied and said, this is what will happen, this is what will happen, this is what will happen. They announced in the holy books as well. <coughs> and interestingly, it happened. So, in understanding 
most of these dynamics today I look and see there is a far greater need to conduct redemption of those old assets that are found scattered everywhere and a centralized system created where we can understand what the old ancestral heritage products are. We can bring in experts to revalue those articles and to find suitable accounts to which they are linked. Everyone does not have this capability. But because we've been working for years and years and years, it's easy for us to bring together everything quite rapidly. And the revaluation of the products and understanding what are their value and how we can put them in the banks and create new currencies. New currencies to support greater development. Uh, this is perhaps the need of the hour. <coughs> there are many things I addressed in 2014. And there are many things I'm addressing even now, which are very similar. And I did mention that Malaysia of all the Islamic nations holds the responsibility of providing such kind of expertise first in knowledge, in wisdom, you know, and the correct methods of implementation, how these things are to be done. So we are back on track. And one of the key themes, too good to be true, it just happens that what we consider this is too good to be true. We've made it happen. And that's why our subject matter is too good to be true. He was, he was a very important trustee. Yeah. So who is M1? It's, it's in the first video of M1. So now the second one, maybe we will ask you, who do you think is M1 or what are the criteria? Is it possible that the M1 person... Still exists? Yeah. It is possible. There are many elders living beyond 100 years, even till today. And they are guiding the destiny of our works also, of the international court systems, international bank, international governments. There are still the old committees or members alive of the original committees. One of the original committees, for example, is the committee of 666. The committee of 666 is a committee of, of elder patriarch something like the elder senators. You know, it's like a committee of senators. When these kind of committees existed in the past, and other committees also started, like the committee of 303, committee of 300, all performing similar functions, where uh, they would handle specific things and not mix with other com committees so as to create conflict. <clears throat> this system of committees with special executives, special people mandated to do special things, a number of these committees formed and through legends, over a period of time, the system of dragons came about. System of dragons. Now what is the system of dragons? You look at who, what is the golden dragon? The golden dragon is that particular community, that particular group, that particular executive body that would exercise control over gold assets. Just to manage a planetary gold wealth requires very special people. 
and they have to be fierce, they have to be military, they have to be doctors, commanders, bankers, everything, you know, whatever they can be. So the head of such a committee, who would manage all the gold resources worldwide on this planet Earth, would be given the title of the Golden Dragon. Normally, the Golden Dragon title would be reserved for the emperors, right? Because it's through their advice what to do, what to do, how to do. Similarly, the Green Dragon becomes the symbol of cash currency. Like we say, the US dollar is the, is the greenback, greenback, right? Greenback currency. Everything is green. In the Politburo, the mention, that whole trust of the committee that adheres to the principle of cash currency, being backed by trees, you know, by, um, by the system of the environment, Cash comes out from the trees, right? And the special interest groups that protects the habitats, protects the environment, the trees, farming, irrigation, agriculture. That particular group is then codenamed the Green Dragon. Now, in order to service the requirements of these dragons, there are other dragon units formed which regulate all the water bodies throughout the planet. And water is considered blue. So the, the fountainhead of this particular group would be then called the blue dragon. Clear? Yeah. <laughs> Similarly, there are white dragons, there are pink dragons, there are red dragons, all with a mandated function. It's, it's not just <clears throat> you have these small, small groups of people. You know, they come up and they say they're dragon, they're dragon. Dragon is a special Politburo responsibility. But to make it legendary, that's why these things were put. Now, this phenomena is part of that 128 uh, families. And it is coming down from the time of, let's say, King Solomon, King David. The whole 2,500 years, 2,800 years of history from the past and coming until now, the same, same fundamentals. So in 1928, what was decided was how to regulate this planet, especially after the World War I. The system of the Solomon treasures, the Solomon treasures and the King Solomon system of Templars. More than, more than that, there are others also, like King Solomon, who manage great wealth. And King Solomon is one of the members of the 128 families. So that means apart from King Solomon, there are 127 entities like King Solomon who are that rich also, who must take care that there is sufficient resources available for everyone. So there were certain visions created in, from 1922 onwards, but in 1928, a, a great amount of wealth was printed. And that was printed in the form of Reichsmarks. It was print printed in the form of the old German currency, the, uh, the Asiatic dollars, and more important, special dollars that were of the value of 10,000, some 5,000 units, some 100,000 and million dollar notes. And this was supposed to be part of the interbank, interbank exchanges. Because individually, at that time in 1928, people could not hold that kind of big money. But the banks could. So this was a commodity for the banks. So how to regulate this was decided in 1928. 
and special articles created like liberty bonds liberty bonds <coughs> farmers bonds and today we are dealing with those articles and no one thought that we in this current age 21st century would be handling those historical assets of such precious value even then and even now we are truly blessed and fortunate to have the opportunity of doing whatever we have been doing to get possession of these assets and to redeem them to monetize them to settle them and to create efficiencies in economy by creating new cash new commodities new currencies and new development projects this is all essentially whatever we are doing is also the united nations work it is the world bank work it is the work of many many un agencies and this is again what was decided in the years before and during 1928 in the united nations at that time so whatever we are discussing about doing now is part of the old un the old world bank and again the same things are coming about in malaysia what was done by the british monarchy led certain companies at that time to regulate to set up these kind of things and the central bank of malaysia the bank negara malaysia the committee that was here in malaya was also responsible for formulating all of these things which needed to be done in the future so we are only adhering to what our ancestors have done what records they have left and what visions and mandates we are supposed to execute and this is all part of the too good to be true action plan because whether such big kind of wealth can exist i mean it's too good to be true but it does exist but it is for everyone to ensure that the future is protected not only in the 21st century 22nd century 23rd century 24th 25th and so on so we hold a great amount of responsibility how can any individual like us ensure that this plan can uh, can uh, go ahead and... in terms of responsibility how you can ensure um we have dealt with that issue there have always been individuals that have shown exemplary character in in the sense that they have wanted to to do something and to do something immense something big and yet be if you can't do something big but yet to be part of some trust or organization and learn new things better things bigger things understand it has been very difficult working along these lines for many people if you are genuinely you know of a good nature and you are righteous you are honest you are you have integrity or credibility you will want to make sure you are part of institutions that support the things you want to do now there are institutions such as the international court of justice the international criminal court even the supreme courts they support these kind of services they support these kind of plans because it's nurturing people nurturing groups families or nurturing nations and the court systems understand so we created opportunities within the courts for people to enroll and register for we created opportunities for companies to register and become part of the court system because the by becoming part members by registering you would automatically get 
a something, a splendid kind of support coming from the institutions where you become legal in what you want to do. Previously, Malaysian citizens wanted to do a lot of things. In my own experience of observation from the 1990s, Malaysia from the time of Dr. Tun Mahathir came out to do something worthwhile. A lot of things were done, but still many hiccups, many, hold, many things were held. But well, the leadership turned Malaysia around. Malaysia was never this classy, right? But now Malaysia is classy. Malaysia is cool, it's cosmopolitan. There are a lot of things which need to be done. And I expect that with the courts system, with institutions such as TUE Capital and the TUE Capital Group of Companies, even Jadifa, the visions or the mandates of these companies, they are in line with the international courts. And being in line with the international court, they are in line with the original World Bank and the original United Nations. So when you are doing something to help even the World Bank and even the United Nations to achieve record success, there's nobody that can stop you because you're already performing. Others are not performing. Sometimes we hear negative comments, but we have no choice, okay. Some negative feedback, you brush it aside and we move forward. Because we know what we're doing. Others don't know. Those who do not know, then must come and join us. Because once we have started the engine of growth, that engine is not going to stop. You know, it's like an aircraft engine. Even if the aircraft is standing, its engine is still working. Engine, aircraft flying, engine is still working. So, in TUE Capital, we have set up a redemption mechanism where it will keep on moving. And we need to redeem most of these assets that we are talking about, the Templar assets. Otherwise, to sustain populations within Malaysia or on this planet Earth in the next 10 years, 50 years, 100 years will become very difficult. If at this moment we do not release the budgets. So what we are doing is we are creating a system of budgets, sanctions. With the, with the new assets coming in, with more revaluations, more redemptions, more settlements, we are able to create budgets for virtually everything. You know, and everything that has been lacking in society is all based on the lack of resources, lack of funds, lack of capital. And we, in creation of the budgets, working with the governments, working with different parties, individuals, or different corporate groups, are still creating a system of budgets. So if certain groups talk to us, this is what they need. We ask them, you come, work together with us and we'll release the budgets for you. It is not an easy thing because it requires intercommunication between many, many different parties. But we are, we are, getting, we are getting there. You mean it does not matter which country they come from, which nation they come from? It doesn't matter. They are eligible for that? Everyone is eligible. Class, but it's like Even chil children are eligible. There are some exceptional children that have shown uh, great responsibility or they have shown things that they can do. Children, youngsters should be taught about redemption work because this entire subject matter is under the classification of central bank operations and the operation of the trusts and how the World Bank operates. People don't know how the World Bank operates. We know how the World Bank operates.
So part of our work is interlinked with the World Bank Development Group. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time a big round of applause to our chief guest. You may have your seats right now. Thank you very much. Today is a holiday, especially for all Buddhists celebrating Visa Day. A happy Visa Day to you. My name is Sharin Alzai, and I'm the, uh, your MC for today. Together with me, uh, we have our very handsome Dato Shamsuddin. Eh? Uh, Thank you, Sharin. Were you from the ex uh, Navy or Army or something like that? Army. Army. Okay. So, Captain Dato Captain uh, Shamsuddin who is with me together with me today, and we'll be. Um, the MC and pulling through all the itineraries that's happening here today, right? Regional policy driven distributed worldwide, initially in Malaysia, medical policy, which is only cost us 1%, which is GDP power and we have to pay it anyway. The project funding, it will be start anytime, and, and the last is the asset redemption program. The assets are the, the redemption of all historical assets, including uh, toxic assets like uh, subprime notes and everything. Uh, please be advised that all this thing is coming through to Tui and us. We fully endorse the operation of Tui Capitals. 